if you recall, for particle kinetics, the equation of motion is simply Newton's second law, that the resultant force acting on the particle equals to its mass times the acceleration vector. Acceleration vector has the same direction as the resultant force. When studied in a 3D rectangular coordinate system, this vector equation becomes three scalar equations that the resultant force along the x, y, or z direction equals to the mass times the acceleration along the x, y, or z direction respectively. And for a 2D problem, the vector equation breaks down into two scalar equations. And we also learned how to use the normal and the tangential coordinates to study the motion of a particle. The tangential axis is always tangent to the path pointing towards the direction of motion. The normal axis is always perpendicular to the tangential axis pointing towards the center of curvature. Represented using normal and tangential coordinates, there are only two acceleration components, a t along the tangential direction and a n along the normal direction. Therefore, the vector equation of Newton's second law becomes two scalar equations that the resultant force along the tangential direction equals to the mass times acceleration along the tangential direction and the resultant force along the normal direction equals to mam. Remember, when studied using normal and tangential coordinates, motion only occurs within an articulating plane. Therefore, there is no motion along the binormal direction, which is the direction perpendicular to the NT plane. Therefore, the resultant force along the binormal direction is always zero. Let's look at this example. There's a 10 kilogram crate traveling down along this smooth slope. Smooth indicates that we don't have to consider friction. If at the point shown it has a speed of 20 meter per second, we need to determine the normal force exerted by the slope to the crate, as well as its acceleration at this point. We're going to use the normal and tangential components to solve this problem, so we first need to set up our coordinate system. The tangential axis is always tangent to the slope and pointing towards the direction of motion. Normal axis always perpendicular to the tangential axis pointing towards the center of curvature. And now we can draw the free body diagram of this crate. It is subjected to only two forces, uh, the weight and the normal force exerted by the slope to this object. And we equate this to the kinetic diagram with the two acceleration components AT and AM. Now we need to resolve the W force into the tangential and normal component. Keep in mind that the normal force is always perpendicular to the slope. Therefore, the normal force is already along the normal direction. So we resolve the weight force W into a component W sine theta along the tangent direction and another component W cosine theta along the negative normal direction. From geometry, we can tell that this theta is the same angle as this one made by the tangential axis with the horizontal line. And now we can write our equations of motions. Along the normal direction, the resultant force equals to n minus w cosine theta, and that equals to m a n. Along the tangential direction, resultant force equals to w sine theta, and that equals to mat. Now let's look at what is known information that we can use to help us solve the unknowns. Because the equation of the path is given, therefore the slope at any given point is dy dx, which in this case is 3 8 times x to the 1 half power. Therefore, at x equals to 16 meter, we can evaluate the slope to be 1.5, and that equals to tangent theta. So from here, we can evaluate theta to be 56.3 degree. Also, we know that the normal component of acceleration can be evaluated by this equation, v squared over rho. v is the speed that is given, 20 meter per second. rho is the radius of curvature that can be determined by this equation if the equation of the path is known. 
Therefore, at x equals to 16 meter, we can evaluate the radius of curvature is 125 meter. Therefore, we can determine that the normal acceleration is 3.2 in the unit of meter per second squared. Therefore, in these two equations of motion, we know the weight, we know theta, we know the mass, and the normal acceleration a n. Substitute them in. We only have two unknowns, n, the normal force, and a t, the tangential acceleration. And we have two equations, so we can solve for both of them. And normal force 86.4 newton, that is one of the answers we're looking for. And because we know the tangential acceleration now, we can fully characterize the acceleration vector. If we want to, we can also find the direction of acceleration. And the magnitude of acceleration can be determined to be 8.77 meter per second squared. And that's the second answer we're looking for.